Rose. Uh, welcome back to my channel, peeps. Today, as you can see from the title below, it's gonna be about my top 10 or my favorite Christmas movies. So my 10 favorite Christmas movies. Or movies that I just have to watch every time Christmas comes around. And you know, in about two weeks, it's gonna be Christmas time again, so everybody's preparing, la di da. And sometimes some of these movies just help you get into that Christmassy vibe and you know, enjoy the holidays a bit more. So let's get started. Number 10. So this one's gonna be like a double whammy, if that makes sense. Like, coming down to the end of the list, I couldn't pick. And these two are not like classic Christmas movies, but they're still funny, they're still cool. First one out of this 10 2 part up is Trading Places. Eddie Murphy, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis. Holiday fun. It's a really cool story. Eddie Murphy is this poor beggar man, and he ends up in an altercation with Dan Aykroyd, who plays a successful businessman. Dan Aykroyd's two bosses are, I mean, they're really wealthy, they're bored, so they come up with this plan to let them switch places. So they embarrass Dan Aykroyd, he's discredited, boom, he lost his job, his fiance dumped him, he has no hope, he landed in jail. Eddie Murphy, on the other hand, gets offered a job, becomes successful and wealthy as well. As it rolls along, they figure out like, well, something's not right here, why, why did this happen? Why are you in my place? What, what was going on? They figure out what happened and they conspire to, you know, mess up the two bosses and make them lose everything basically. I hope I didn't give away too much, but it's really, it's a really kicksy story. I mean, Eddie Murphy, hilarious every time. That's enough for that one. Just Friends. Just Friends is a really sweet story. Um, Ryan Reynolds, you know. He was a really chubby boy growing up, but he had a best friend, Jamie Palladino. She was really pretty, everybody loved her. And um, he got embarrassed on their graduation night, so he ran away said, I'm gonna make something of myself, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna see. And then boom, 10 years later, he comes back to town, not intentionally. He meets Jamie again and realizes, hmm, I have a chance now to get with this girl who I was always in love with. And, you know, he falls in love with her all over again. Number nine, Love Actually. Love Actually is a really cute story, set in London. It's an ensemble cast, so we have Hugh Grant, Colin Firth, Emma Thompson, that's a lot of people in there, I can't remember them all right now. But all the stories, of course, like, you know, kind of come together. Like, one person might be married to somebody, and then that person works with the friend of some other guy. And so you get all the stories kind of coming in together, which is really cool. So it talks about love, obviously, love actually. All centered around Christmas time, a prime minister who falls in love with his assistant, uh, two people on a, like, a porn movie who end up realizing, shit, like, hey, I kind of like you, you know, man. Like, really cool little stories. I mean, I'm not sure I would really suggest that you watch it with your parents or with your family, but it's a cute story. Numero eight, The Holiday. Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, Titanic girl, my girl, that's so girl. Kate Winslet and Jack Black. So Kate Winslet is from a small town in England. She is in love, head over heels in love with this man who just kind of uses her when he needs her. And she realizes at one Christmas party, that he's actually engaged this girl he said he was nearly into, didn't have anything with, and that devastates her. And she has a really, really cute cottage in the little small town. And Cameron Diaz, on the other hand, is really successful. She does trailers um, in LA, and her boyfriend cheated on her. So she throws him out, boom, she's like, oh man, it's Christmas time, like I need to get away, I need to get out. And she contacts Kate Winslet's character because she had her cottage up on her website and they end up agreeing to actually switch houses for Christmas. So Kate Winslet goes to her lovely LA villa and Cameron Diaz goes to this small little English cottage and meets Kate Winslet's brother. It's a really, really cute story. Really, really good soundtrack as well. Like honestly, that soundtrack, they did well. And Simon did well. Number seven, Christmas with the Cranks. Tim Allen, you have Jamie Lee Curtis again. Trading places, yeah. So they are, you know, married. There's a Christmas tradition of theirs. They spend, you know, it's family time, obviously. They have a Christmas party, invite everybody from the little town. But this Christmas, their daughter Blair is going away to, where she went, boy? She went away for Christmas, um, you know, with her boyfriend. But that leaves their family devastated. Like, what are we gonna do for Christmas? The first Christmas without our daughter, what are we gonna do? And Tim Allen comes up with the idea, hmm, why don't we take a cruise, an exotic Caribbean cruise? Caribbean cruise. And Jamie Lee Curtis at first is like, what do you mean at Christmas time? We can't do that. Everybody expects we're gonna have this party, boom, boom, boom. 
But then she gets around with the idea and then they decide, okay, we're gonna go. And everybody, as Christmas time is coming around, everybody's like, so why are you guys not preparing things? You know, what's gonna happen? So everybody, the town kind of turns on them because they're not doing the traditional Christmas thing. They're skipping Christmas. And their daughter Blair, out of the blue, while they're packing, right again, ready to go on this cruise, calls and says, I'm coming home for Christmas. So they're like, what? And they have to, last minute, scrap their plans and throw together this party and make it seem like, oh no, no, this was always the idea. It's a good story. Number six. Santa Claus, Tim Allen, yet again. Tim Allen, all right, divorced his wife, they, knew that they were married, they have a son. She's married to another guy right now. This Christmas is his turn to take the boy. So the boy is like, oh God, why have to be with my dad? And this boy, I'm being a mom, like a real Christmas. Cause Tim Allen has no clue what he's doing. And boom, in the middle of the night, little boy hears like something on the roof. So then he wakes his dad up and his dad's like, what, why are you bothering me? So they go outside now and he sees this guy on his, on his roof in some funny outfit and he's like, what are you doing up there? Guy falls off the roof, obviously. He's like, what the hell, you know? Falls off the roof. And it was Santa. He, he's dead from the fall. And the little boy's like, Daddy, put on the outfit. Put on the outfit. So he put on the Santa outfit just for kicks to please his son. They see the reindeer on the roof. And the little boy's like, can we see them? Can we see them? So they go up on top of the roof, get into the, you know, sledge. Sleigh? The sleigh. Sledge. Get into the sleigh. And boom, the sleigh goes off. So they end up, you know, delivering the little gifts and stuff. But what they didn't realize is that by putting on the outfit, the Santa outfit, became Santa Claus. So now it's the story about him transforming, putting on weight, not sure why am I getting so fat over a few months, you know what I mean? Like putting on serious weight. And it all comes together that he became Santa. They'd gone to the North Pole. And it was a really cool story of like this man, his father, who was really reluctant at first to really change or really make an effort and like how he becomes Santa. This man who's supposed to be, you know, giving, caring, has his little elves. You know, it really all comes together and he even patches things up with his ex-wife and, you know, happy ending, duh. But I just realized that I forgot number, which number is that? Is that number five? Number five. How the Grinch stole Christmas. Jim Carrey, I love him, one of my favorites ever. He, you know, little furry green guy in this little town, who, who Bill, I think it was called. Yeah. Number four, Jingle All The Way. Jingle All The Way is a really nice story with Arnie. Arnie Schwarzenegger. I have his book, hold on. Oh God, the battery going to die. All right, so Arnie, just so you, you know, get a little idea of what I'm talking about, Arnie. Boom, yeah. Um, he, again, father workaholic. His son had a karate, you know, where you get the belt and stuff, had a little presentation thing. But is that Arnie, Arn? Arnold had to work late again, so he missed it. And when he got home, he tried to apologize. He said, like, oh, I'm so sorry. Son, I was like, yeah, whatever, Dad. You always say sorry, but you know, sorry. So he's like, what would you want for Christmas, my son? What would you want? He, and then this kind of gets his son a bit excited. Like, okay, of course. Okay, let me tell you. He wants a Turbo Man doll, like a action figure, not doll. Sorry, boys. A Turbo Man action figure. I like, is the hottest thing out at that time for Christmas. Everybody wants a Turbo Man action figure. But then he says, okay, sure, no problem. The little boy showing him all the moves that the action figure could do. And he's like, yeah, cool, no problem. I'll get you that. Like, thanks, Dad. So they patch up. And then a few weeks later, a few weeks later, his wife is like, you got the action figure, right? It was like a few days before Christmas, yeah? You got the action figure, right? He's like, of course I did. No, he didn't. He forgot. So now, Christmas Eve now, he has to run around the whole city looking for this action figure. But they're all sold out because it's a Turbo Man action figure. So he runs into Sinbad, written in Sinbad, and they kind of, you know, seem to be friends at first, but then they're both looking for the same action figure, so they end up button heads. And it's a really cool, you know, thing of this man going after this action figure for his son, and, you know, going the lengths, like, doing everything possible to get it. Number three, The Ref. The Ref is a cool story. Dennis Leary, um, so The Ref. So it's a really cool story. This burglar, he tried to break into the really, really wealthy man's house, but that didn't work. Um, so he got attacked by the dog, the alarms went off, so police came and he had to flee. He just, you know, stumbled into this convenience store and took this woman. I was like, okay, I'm, you're gonna take me to your house. Woman gets in the car with her husband, who they've been having some real marital problems, going to therapy. So the poor burglar doesn't even realize that they're crazier than he is. So they go back to their house and he like holds them hostage. They are family members coming. They're gonna be having these house to house searches because the curfew that they have to put in place to find this burglar. So like, you know, strap the time, the burglar's trying to get out, trying to call his contact. Contact is messing up. Sorry, so when the family comes, the burglar has to play along like he's their therapist. But it's a really funny story. The family is able to, you know, patch things up. The burglar gets on his way and is able to, you know, start life again. Trapped in paradise. My boy Nicholas Cage, everybody's my boy. Nicholas Cage, he works as a manager 
at a restaurant and his two brothers, they are crooks, criminals, they are in prison. But due to overcrowding around Christmas time, they are up for parole. So they do get out and they get back to their house by their mother, by Ma. Two brothers heard a, heard a story from their cellmates that there's this one bank in Paradise, Pennsylvania that security is older than water. So the security, like honestly, anybody could just walk in there basically and pull them up, boom, take the money. That's like a criminal's dream. So these two brothers, they come up with a story to get their brother out of the of New York where they were, to drive to Pennsylvania, to help a friend, la la la. So when they get there, they, you know, are able to tie his head up and they do try and rob this bank. They tried to drive away, it didn't really work, they ended up kind of, not an accident, but they needed help. And this one guy was like, oh my god, no problem, boom, I'll take you to my aunt and uncle. And they didn't really want to, but it's like, we kind of have to, you know, hide somewhere. They go to this house, the family is super, super, super nice, like paradise is really paradise, like everybody's really nice. The family treats them really like family already. And they realize that like, like these people own or are responsible for this bank and we just ruin their Christmas. It's a really cool story of, you know, coming around for Christmas, you know, not just being selfish and being there for your family and doing the right thing. Funny as well. And number one, home alone, home alone. I can't pick one or two, like the first one and second one, so I'm just gonna put home alone, like two, those two movies. I usually watch the first one and I watch the second one, or however, people on that day. Home alone, this little boy Kevin, he always has problems. He's the youngest in his family, a really, really big family. He always, you know, makes a big scene like, oh my god, I hate this family. His family's supposed to be taking a trip to Paris in the first one. He has a fight with his family and makes a, not a wish, but he just says, I never want to spend Christmas with you ever again. I never want to see you, boom. When he wakes up the next day, his family, because they had to rush to leave, forgot him. And he's home alone, and at first he's really thrilled, like, oh my god, yeah, party time for me. But there are two criminals on the loose who are going from house to house in that little town. Now he has to defend his house, has to defend his, you know, family, so to say. He sets up all these booby traps to stop the burglars from taking over his house. He saves the day for his family. When they come back, it's all nice, and he realizes what his family truly means to him. And that's the beauty of it, like, Christmas time is, you know, family time. Like, J. Cole, you know what I mean? Like, love yours, you know? There's no family better than yours. Love what you have.